We'd like to take a moment to thank our listeners sincerely for your support of Honest News Network Ministry. If you're interested in supporting this ministry, please use the information provided. Thank you. Each prayer I pray, each step I take, I Luke chapter 8, Luke chapter 8 and verse 14, beginning with verse 14. And that which fell among thorns are they which, when they have heard, go forth and are choked with the cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring forth no fruit to perfection. The latter part of this verse, what we want to focus on in this message <clears throat> this, after, this afternoon Fruit to perfection. Fruit to perfection. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for life and life more abundantly. We thank you, Lord, for eternal life. We thank you, Lord, for this eternal life that is in your Son, Jesus Christ, that has been given to us that believe, this free gift of eternal life. We thank you, Lord, for your word that helps us to mature and grow, to attain unto perfection, our lives might bring the ultimate glory to you, Lord. We ask that you bless and that you anoint as we minister your word. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Praise God. In a previous message, we shared with you the reason that fruit is not brought to perfection. The cares and the riches and the pleasures of this life, many get caught up in those things. The message today, we're going to be dealing with fruit that is brought to perfection. And I believe to be brought to perfection, we're going to have to understand perfection, what perfection is, and what perfection looks like. Luke chapter, chapter, uh, chapter 8 and verse 15 but that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart having heard the word they keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. They have a good heart. It's an honest heart. And they keep the word. And they bring forth fruit with patience. A good and an honest heart. When the Lord reveals to you 
something that needs to change in your life, are you honest about it? Hmm? Do you let the God, do you let the Lord help you? Do you let the Lord change you? Or do you deny it? Do you fight with it? Do you struggle with it? Are you dishonest? Because you'll, you'll never bring forth fruit to perfection if you're not honest. And you want to thank God when he reveals to you something that needs to change. Amen. Jesus said every branch in him that was bearing fruit, he says he purgeth it. Who does the purging? It's not Jesus. He said he's the he's the vine, the true vine, but he didn't say he was the one that did the purging. He said it was his words that did the purging. But remember, his words were the words of the Father. So God the Father does the purging. And Jesus said, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. Are you listening, folks? We, de- we need to be like our Heavenly Father. If we're going to be like Jesus, we need to be like our Heavenly Father. We need to know our Heavenly Father. And how many know we need to know His love? But many times we think that's enough, just knowing God's love. But how many know there's some things that we need to hate? Hmm? Mark chapter 4, verse 8. And other fell on good ground and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased and brought forth some 30, some 60, and some 100. Not everybody's going to produce 100. Just like in this world, when you take a test, not everybody gets 100. Not everybody's going to bring forth a hundredfold to bring the ultimate glory to God the Father. But some are going to. And Jesus makes it clear who it is that's going to. He that hath an ear, right? Not everybody listens. Not everybody's honest. And he said unto them, He that hath an ear, let him hear. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Again, not everyone has ears to hear. Just because you have ears doesn't mean you hear. He has to give you that listening ear that hears what the Spirit is saying. Amen. Psalm 139, verse 21. Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee? And am not I grieved with those that rise up against thee? Do you hate what God hates. Hmm? You'll never stop doing what you don't hate. Hmm? I hate them with perfect hatred. Talking about fruit to perfection. I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them mine enemies. 
Now, just because the Bible says love your enemies, Jesus said to love your enemies, does not mean that you still don't count them enemies. They're still enemies. Hello. Amen. But you love your enemies. You do good to them. But you're not blind. Huh? They're still your enemies. But are you going to win them over by calling them your enemy and treating them like you're, they're the enemy? No. Jesus even called Judas friend. Jesus was trying to win Judas over. Hmm? Are you trying to win your enemies over? Are you overcoming evil with good? Are you doing good to them that are doing evil to you? Search me, O God, and know my heart, and try me, and know my thoughts. That's what we should be concerned with. We shouldn't be concerned how evil somebody else is. Search me. Amen? It's me, O oh Lord, that's standing in the need of prayer. It's not my brother. It's not my sister. It's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Amen, brothers and sisters? Let's just stop right there. Search me. Come on, Brother Joseph, move on. Don't stay there. Don't linger there. Come on, let's move on, Brother Joseph. Come on, let's go. We don't want to spend much time here. Search me, O oh God. And know my heart. And try me. And know my thoughts. How much time are you willing to spend right there? Hmm? Remember, David's speaking of his enemies. Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee. Am not I grieved with those that rise up against thee? See, David's not talking about his enemies that are against him. He's talking about the enemies of God. There's a difference, folks. David said, those that are against you, God, I'm against. But we live in a very self-centered generation. It's all about me, myself, and I. And we're looking for God to agree with us when we hate somebody, right? Or when we are enemies with somebody. We want God to go out to battle against them. But what is perfect hatred? It's not self-centered. David said he hated those that hated God. He didn't say those that rise up against me. He said those that rise up against thee. I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them mine enemies. And in all of this, David wants to make sure his hatred is perfect. That it's not self-centered. That it's not self-righteous. And so he examines himself by asking God to examine him. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. Talking to you today about bringing forth fruit to perfection, brothers and sisters. you got to be honest. 
Amen? You got to be honest. God already knows, but you still got to be honest with God. Even though he already knows, it doesn't do you any good to deny it or be dishonest because God already knows. Don't make him a liar. Amen? Don't make God a liar. He knows. And if you're disagreeing with what he sees and what he knows and what he's revealing to you, then you're calling him a liar. Amen. Listen, folks, this is God speaking. You want to know God? Romans chapter 9, verse 13. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Does that mean God did not love Esau? That's not what it says. Look up the original Hebrew. It means God loved Esau less than he loved Jacob. Can you imagine that God loved Jacob more than he loved Esau? There are those on the earth that God loves, and off the earth, those that are with him already, that he loves more than he loves others. You can honestly see that with Jesus and John, can you not? John said, the disciple whom Jesus loved. He knew the Lord loved him. You don't see any of the other disciples saying that. And we see that. We see the Lord's closeness to John. You'd have to be blind to not see it. Do you, do you believe that? That God loves some more than he loves others? That's what he said. Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated. Do you think that Jesus loved John the same way that he loved Judas when he called Judas friend? I think not. I think not, brothers and sisters. Sometimes I think we think God is just all love. We don't understand perfect hatred. We don't understand God's jealousy. We don't understand his anger and his wrath. Did you forget that you were made in God's image and his likeness? The Bible doesn't say anger is sin. And the Bible doesn't say hatred is sin, if it's perfect hatred. Amen. Jesus said, if you hate your brother, he said, you're a murderer. But he didn't say, if you hate the world, you're a murderer. He said, if you hate your brother. We're supposed to hate the world, are we not? We're supposed to be separate from the world. We're supposed to hate the things God hates. You say, well, Brother Joseph, the Bible says God so loved the world. That's why we need to come to perfection, so we can understand God's heart, so we can understand who God is. So we're not blind, brothers and sisters. So we're not naive. So we're not vulnerable in the sense that we just leave ourselves open. No, we, we've got to be saved. We've got to be protected by God. And how are you going to be protected by God if you don't know him? You got to know him. You got to know what he loves and what he hates. Praise God. And not only is there perfect hatred with God, there's also perfect love. 1 John chapter 4, verse 17. Herein is our love made perfect, 
that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. Boldness in the day of judgment. There is no fear in love. No fear in love. But perfect love casteth out fear. Because fear hath torment or punishment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. John knew that Jesus loved him. Do you? We love him because he first loved us. How many know that's the foundation? The foundation's not built upon you loving him, how much you love him. The foundation is he first loved you. Are you listening? The foundation is his love for us, knowing his love, being secure in his love. That's the foundation. Many need to get back to the foundation because you're basing the foundation on how much you love him instead of understanding he first loved you. When the Bible in the book of Revelation says they left their first love, God says, uh, Jesus says, I have somewhat against you because you've left your first love. They left this place where they, he, they understood he first loved them. Amen. You didn't first love Jesus. He first loved you. If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? Stop saying you love God and you can't love your brother. He's not talking about the world. He's not talking about you loving the world. We're not supposed to love the world. But if you can't love your brother, how can you say you love God? You can see your brother, hello, but you can't see God. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1. I want to read this chapter. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity or love, God's love. I am become as sounding brass and tinkling cymbals. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains and have not charity or love, I am nothing. See, Paul's talking about the foundation, isn't he? Though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity or God's love, it profiteth me nothing. Are you listening? He's talking about a work salvation versus true salvation. There's a lot of religions, including the Catholic Church today, that do penance, that go through certain sufferings that they're paying for sin. But when you receive true salvation through faith by God's grace, it 
It's not something you work for. You don't work to be saved. I may know that. But once you are saved by grace, it's a gift of God. It's freely given. Then you're going to do something. I may know that. Amen. You're going to do something. You're not going to do evil works. You're going to do good works once you're saved, right? Charity suffereth long. God's love suffers long. It's kind. Charity envieth not. It vaunteth not itself. It is not puffed up. It doesn't behave itself unseemly. It seeks not her own. It's not easily provoked thinks no evil. Did you hear that? God's love does not think evil. See, if you understand perfect hatred, and you understand who your enemies are, you understand that by the Spirit. You understand that through the Spirit. David wasn't talking about those that hated him. He wasn't concerned about those that hated him. Amen? But we see there were times in David's life where he was very self-righteous. And he wanted God to fight his enemies. But David came to a place of maturity. Do not I hate those that hate you, God? Hmm? Praise God, people. Are we still concerned about ourself? Self-preservation? Are we still concerned about those that hate us? And those that are against us? Or have we come to the place like David to say, Do not I hate those that hate thee? I hate them with perfect hatred. Praise God. You're going to rule and reign with him? You're going to return with Jesus Christ in judgment? It's not going to be by hating your enemies. About asking God to go out against your enemies. It's going to be when you come to become one with him and you hate what he hates and loves what he loves. You become like him. Amen? You become like your heavenly father. And Jesus says he reigns on the just and the unjust, both alike. He doesn't show partiality. How many know that? You're not supposed to show partiality if you're walking in God's love. Treat one person this way and treat another person that way. And No. Be therefore perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. Praise God. But we're not supposed to be thinking evil. Praise the Lord. If you've got facts, you have evidence, and you're speaking evidence, you're speaking truth, you're not thinking evil. Thinking evil is when you just always thinking evil of someone, always thinking bad of them all the time. You never... And you have nothing to justify it. You have no evidence. You have nothing to back it up. Amen. God's love does not rejoice in iniquity, lawlessness, but rejoices in the truth. 
God's love bears all things, believeth all things. In other words, there's no room for doubt and unbelief. Believeth all things. You come to a place of blindness in the spirit where you don't see the way you used to see. Hey, man, you, you can be like Jesus and say to Judas, friend. How many of us could have done that, knowing he was, no, knowing he was betraying you, that he had organized and he was conspiring against you, and you call him friend? Jesus wasn't being sufficient, sufficient. Jesus wasn't trying to use hyperbole when he said to uh, to Judas, friend, he meant it. You may be my enemy. You you may treat you may see me as an enemy, but Jesus says I I'm calling you friend because I want you to be my friend because I want you to be saved, because I want you to be delivered, Judas. I don't want you to do this. Are you listening? He's willing that none should perish, that none would be lost. Praise God. Love believeth all things. And if that's not enough, love hopeth all things. You know, are you one of those people that always hopes for the best? You always believe for the best. You want to see the best. You, you're not one of those that looks for evil or somebody that's looking for negative. Or, no. What I'm, when I say negative, I'm saying things that are unfounded. I'm saying things that have no basis and no evidence. The world calls that a pessimist. Everything's negative. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm trying to tell you is what God says in his word is we are always supposed to be hoping for the best. I hope America will repent. I hope it won't keep going the way it's going. Or you could say, oh, boy, it looks like America is just going to keep getting worse. It's not going to get any better. Well, no, I hope. I hope, they'll, I hope they'll repent. I hope they'll turn. I hope things don't have to go this bad. I, th- I hope things don't have to get worse. Even though you have the evidence, the Bible says things are going to wax worse and worse, you can still hope for the best. Who knows, right? Who knows what God might do? Amen, people. Do you want to see God destroy the earth? Do you want to see God bring his wrath? Do you want, I don't, I don't want that. I know it's coming and I know it's got to be, but I don't want to see it. I mean, I don't want it to happen. I don't want any, I don't want to see one soul end up in hell, but that doesn't mean it's not going to happen. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? We should never be on the side of rejoicing in the destruction of the wicked. We should never be on the side of rejoicing when our enemies are not having it so well. Don't rejoice in evil. Don't rejoice. There's coming a time where in the Lord, in Christ, in the Father, where we we will rejoice over the wicked. There'll be a time. But that's perfection, people. There's a difference. And that's why David was saying, search me, O God. Know me. David wasn't interested in just hating and being enemies. He wanted to make sure his heart was right. And Jesus said, 
If you're going to bring forth fruit to a hundredfold perfection, he said you're going to have to have a good and an honest heart. Amen. Charity never faileth. God's love does it never it never quits. It never fails. So if you're failing, if you're falling short of his glory, you need more of his love. You need more of God's love. Many times we fail because of fear, but there is no fear in love. So we need more of God's love. We need his love to replace hate in our hearts. In fear, that is not perfect hatred. Are you listening? But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. We know in part, and we prophesy in part. Brother Joseph has been preaching, prophesying in part up till now. But not always is this going to be the case. But when that which is perfect is come. How many of you right now are on the edge of your seat when that which is perfect is come? Does that get your attention? Are you interested in that? When that which is perfect has come, perfection, fruit to perfection, then that which is in part not perfect shall be done away. Hmm? Are you interested? When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. Does God have to reveal to us what childish things are, or do we already know? Hmm? Do you know what a childish thing is? Of course you do. Of course you do. For now we see through a glass darkly. Right now, we see through a glass darkly. Through a mirror darkly. But then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. That's awesome. Is it not? What an awesome verse of Scripture. Then shall I know, even as also I am known. Perfection. Hundredfold. And now abideth faith, hope, and charity, these three. But the greatest of these is the foundation, charity, God's love. He first loved us. This is an unshakable foundation, people. You remember what Paul said? I'm persuaded, he said. And he was trying to persuade the people that nothing shall separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Secure in God's love. An unshakable foundation. Praise God. We've got to bring forth fruit to perfection, people. Nothing short of it. Nothing less than perfection to bring the greatest glory to God the Father. God bless you.